Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock TO Studio and I'm sharing with you another Nano Jaumo page. Uh, today is the 19th of November. We're getting closer but we're still not done. <laughs> this page is themed manly and I started out with Gesso right there. I figured that you didn't need to watch that. This page in my book got kind of stuck together with some of my underpaper and it tore on one edge. Just tore the, the top, not, not all the way through, so I wanted to seal it. And I also didn't really have a page in this jelly book that went with Manly. They've all got shimmer on them, they've all got lots of patterns, a lot of pinks and purples, not a lot of Manly colors. and so. I was at a loss, so I just decided to go ahead and go over this page and cover it entirely. There will be none of the pattern left once I'm done. And I'm starting out with craft paint, and I'm just finger painting. This is just a light blue. I think it's this one's Cracker Barrel. If, if anybody really needs to know what paints I used and what colors, you can uh, leave me a comment. Uh, I don't think it's that important, but if you really need to know, that's the exact color that you want. <laughs> I will be sure to answer you if you leave me a comment. Um, I'm applying it with my fingers and I'm just making like a, a general background at this point. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do but I had an idea because I was thinking to myself what does manly mean to me? And I grew up in Oregon in the Pacific Northwest and also I have a lot of a large family with several big burly uncles and and cousins and they all live up in Idaho most of them do so I was thinking to myself that the epitome of a man manly man is a lumberjack or an outdoorsman or someone who's out working in the forest and he's chopping trees and he's making his own way he's hunting that's that's the type of thing that I think of when I think of manly so that's where my page was going. So I'm making a background um, using my different colors of blues and it's going to be like a forest in, in the great northwest. It's going to have trees and it's got the, the blue sky and, and that's what I'm going for. So I just have some other different colors of craft paints there. A couple of them were deco art paints and um, I think the other ones are Cracker Barrel, cra not Cracker Barrel, uh, you know what I mean, <laughs> Apple Barrel. <laughs> I must have biscuits and uh, gravy on my mind or something. I don't know why <laughs> I said Cracker Barrel. Anyway, so you can see what I'm doing. I've got my finger and I'm dipping it in the paint and I'm blending. And I want the top to be lighter because if you look out to the horizon line of the sky, it's lighter at the top and darker toward the horizon. So I'm doing that, but then instead of putting a green on the bottom, I'm just going ahead with another line of blue. I don't want to be that, I'm not making a scene. I don't want to be that literal with, you know, green and brown on the bottom. I'm just having fun finger painting. It's just a really satisfying experience to get your fingers all dirty and get them in the paint and smear it around. You should try it if you haven't. I use brushes sometimes, but sometimes I just feel like I need to use my fingers. Usually just the middle finger on my right hand. <laughs> I know, this is getting boring. Come on, hurry up, lady, finish this stupid background. Oh wait, that's me. I'm almost done, really, I am. See, there's only one white spot left. So now my whole page is all covered with different smeary blues. Also, blue is a boy color. Another reason I picked it. And I'm drawing. I did do a lot of drawing, but I cut most of that footage out because you don't really need to see me drawing a page. And I also got out a stamp set. This one is old. This is a Stampin' Up! set. And I think it's from when I very, very started being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So that's probably 
at least 15 at least 15 years ago I was a demonstrator for 10 years and that's been a while ago so it might even be 20 years old and I like the trees and so that's the reason that I kept the stamp set is because I really like those trees it also has a, a moose silhouette and a pine cone and some Canadian geese that fly in the sky which I could have put on but I didn't it's a it's a cool stamp set but it's old so I doubt it's still available and I'm using craft paint again this is kind of a forest green color and a little bit of blue in and with it because these are blue spruce that's why not because my foam brush actually accidentally dipped into the blue no it's because they're blue spruce it's my story and I'm sticking to it so as you guys probably know it's it's easier to stamp in your art journal if your stamp isn't mounted on wood but pretty much all of mine are stamping up ones that are mounted on wood I have some of the silicone ones that that uh, are newer but the majority of my stamps are from when stamping up didn't have silicone stamps they only had wood mounted stamps so that's what they are so there's my foresty background there's my blue spruce fading off into the beautiful sky and I'm getting out another stamp from the stamp set which is a little just a little branch of pine and I'm just gonna put that along the bottom for some visual interest just using the same green this is a pretty easy way to make a scene I could have painted or drew all those trees but if I have the stamps why not use them and some more drawing there's my heat tool Now I'm getting out some white paint and uh, mixing it with water. You've seen me do this before. You've seen everybody do this, but in this case I wanted it to be a little bit snowy. So I used my fan brush and my white paint and did splatter, splatter, splatter. I also love doing that. It's very fun. But doesn't that look like a snowy scene now? Isn't that cool? Because if you're a manly man, I mean, you would work out in the snow, or the rain, or the sleet, or the hail. Right? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to draw my man. And he's a lumberjack. And he's got big, strong shoulders. Because to swing that axe, you got to have big, strong shoulders. And he's wearing a watch cap, because all of them that I see, they still are wearing those. They've also caught plaid shirts and jeans and suspenders, all of which this man is going to have. I've visited Portland recently, and it seems like that type of look either never left or is coming back. Seems like everyone in Portland has a beard if they're a guy. I love the Pacific Northwest, but I don't love beards. They scare me a little bit because you can't really see what's behind them so yeah it's gonna take me a while to draw this and this is the majority of my page today was drawing and coloring things that I really enjoy doing and as this guy comes to life I know you're saying to yourself, or you're singing in your head, and I know you can't help it. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Had a little trouble uh, trying to decide how his arms were going to be. I wanted his arms to be crossed over his chest like he was, you know, that stance of crossing your chest and looking really big and tough. But is where would his hands be? What, I guess they would be around the axe of the handle, the handle of the axe. Wow, I'm having one of those days. Yeah, so that's what I ended up with. And of course he has jeans. I think 
denim jeans were invented for working because they're just really strong. Now they're more of a fashion statement, but when they were invented, I believe they were work clothes. It's also got suspenders. Only a lumberjack would wear suspenders these days, I think. Okay, now I'm getting out my Neocolor 2 crayons, water-soluble crayons. I love these things. They're made by Karandiash or Karandiash, and I highly recommend this product. And they're not paying me to say that, obviously. I just really, really love it. They're soft and creamy, and they blend easily. And I'm using white acrylic paint with, with water to blend, which really faded out that color. But I go back in and do it again, so it's all good. The reason that I use acrylic paint with my watercolor crayons is because they're water soluble and if I put a little acrylic paint for the blending then it makes them more permanent. So I'm starting out by putting a base layer of a medium toned color on everything and I think I'm going to speed it up here in a bit maybe play music because I'm really not sure I can talk through all this but um, that's how I do it I start with the medium tone and I go over everything I usually um, press down hard on the crayon around the edges over the, the pencil lines and then I kind of scribble over the rest of it and then I blend it And this is only the first layer of color. I will go back in and add darker colors and lighter colors. And it may seem like it's time intensive, but it's really not. It's enjoyable. I like to color. And since the, the huge trend lately of uh, adult coloring books, I do not think I'm the only one who likes to color. Or else no one would be buying all those books. I made his hat and his jeans the same color for continuity. Didn't want too many different colors going on there. This color on which is a red and it's a blue toned red and once I started blending it I really thought that it looked way too pink. A lumberjack would not wear a pink shirt. Maybe if he was off duty but not while he's working. I just I just can't imagine and actually I really can't imagine him wearing a pink argyle shirt you know when he's going out for dinner later but I guess it's possible. <laughs> so I look at that and I say, okay, I'm going to go in with my, ah, uh, no, never mind. I'm going to put some different color red on that. I really don't like it. So I use a, mo a more, um, well, a red that has more yellow tint than blue tint in it. And that looks a lot better. It's not as pink. So I'm double, double coloring on this one, but that's okay, it looks better.
okay now this is my second layer of color and I go in with a darker color and I go around the edges and then I blend it and then if it needs a highlight I use the, the stronger bit of white acrylic that I have there and that is how I do shadows and highlights when I'm just doing a quick illustration like this if I was really painting I would you know take more time and do more layers but for this this works out great and it's fun so that's the same dark navy color putting it in around the edges and in places where I think would be dark and then I come in with the white and put the highlights on the places that I think would be highlighted seems pretty simple right When you start with charcoal gray, like on the axe, not much place to go but black, so. probably saw me put a gray beard on him you were probably wondering is he Santa Claus is he a really old lumberjack but no that was just my my undercolor so that I could come in with the black on top and make him look more like he has a black beard if you just colored the whole thing solid black then there wouldn't be any variation and it wouldn't look like a beard it would look like he was wearing uh, the lower half of a stocking mask over his face. And it seems like the suspenders are always that gold color, kind of an ochre. Not sure why. do some uh, detailing on this shirt. I want him to look like he's wearing a plaid or checkered shirt as he should be. So I but I don't want to just draw you know parallel lines and then horizontal horizontal lines over the whole thing because the the fabric has movement and there's places where it's bent and the the design would be going the other way like on his arms. So rather than really filling it in, I'm just drawing some more like a sketchy vertical and horizontal lines and pluses and things like that to give the impression that it, there's checks or plaids, but not actually completely doing them. And I'm using a charcoal gray and then adding a little shadow while I'm doing it. And then in a minute I'll come in with the red again and fill in some of the squares in the pattern with red. And then after that, during the um, detailing at the end with uh, white and black, I'll add some more white lines in different places, kind of sketchy different places and it really does look as though he's wearing a plaid or checked red shirt 
without actually filling in the entire pattern. Okay, now for the detailing. I've got my fine tip black Posca pin there made by Uni. And I'm going around all the different lines. Filling in the details. I always uh, turn my work as I'm doing this type of thing. It seems easier to me to turn it and turn it and turn it. I, I don't know if everyone does that. But for you all, sometimes it's upside down. And for me too. Yep, I've got my light blue Posca to give him some blue eyes. And then here's my white fine tip. Adding some stitches on his britches, giving him some buttons to hold his clothing together. Little details on the stretchy part of his hat. Now here's what I was talking about earlier. I'm going in and adding just little highlight lines around just to add some more emphasis to his checkered plaid shirt. Highlights on the edge, the sharp edges of the axe, and uh, some black pupils for his eyes, and then little white highlights. And I think I'm done coloring. Time to cut him out. And then we're going to attach him to the page. I'm going to use medium gel, matte medium. Um, not the heavy, but the medium. Um, I would use the heavy if I had it, but I don't. And I'm really putting a good coat on there. I really want to slather it up with that stuff. Because this is mixed media paper, so it's a little bit heavier. And the matte finish on the gel won't disturb the finish of the craft paint. Craft paint almost always dries in a very matte finish. So I wouldn't want to put a glossy something on there that would be so obvious. And then I'm just going um, touching just the edges if they're not completely down just to add a little bit more underneath it. But I'm not going to coat the whole thing because I didn't really use that much acrylic paint when I was blending all my um, Posca, or not Posca, but uh, Neo colors, and so they're still probably water soluble. And if I just started slathering stuff over the top, I think I might smear some of the color. So I just left the medium on the underside of the paper. And then I've got my little saying, and I printed it in a on my computer in a font that looks like um, labeling, old-fashioned labeling tape. It would be fun if I actually had one of those machines, but I don't. So I printed it like this. And then I'm going to glue it on with um, Aileen's Tacky Glue. Just like putting it on and then smearing it with my fingers on the back. It'll give it a good solid glue down without fussing about getting out the other stuff that I was using. Although it's right there on the table, as you can see. <laughs> But my brush is in the water, so which you can't see, but it's on the left-hand side. 
And then I think my final thing is just to take my white fine tip Posca again and go really sketchily around the edges of where that uh, black part of the pretend tape ends just to give it a little bit of more visual punch. Not being careful, just, you know, putting it on there kind of haphazardly. And there you have it, my lumberjack page. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to check out my friends. Their links are um, in the info card and below. And I guess this is bye bye. <laughs>